Hi there, Phil here. So this is tip 11.2, weed refuges in the garden. So it may be that you keep your garden diligently weeded and tidy. However, there will be places where weeds can find refuge and sanctuary and find place to establish themselves and then spread through your garden. And this tip is setting out to show you how you can avoid or manage those places to best advantage. As is my usual practice, I'll illustrate with examples from my own garden or from friends' gardens. Just to summarise what I'm suggesting, firstly, keep a clear area along the boundary, particularly behind shrubs and other perennial plants. Trim the base of hedges and topiary to leave a small gap for maintenance so that you can get underneath. Thirdly, mulch among garden plants, keep that mulch replenished. And finally, eradicate all seedling weeds in paving gaps and will ensure that the paving is as low maintenance as possible. First of all, we'll talk about boundaries. These are places on the edge of your property where you might have shrubs or hedges to help to frame your garden or perhaps to add privacy or shelter for yourself. But this is a prime place for weeds to establish themselves as a refuge or perhaps to spread from your neighbour's property. To avoid this becoming a problem, I establish a no man's land between plants and the boundary, as you can see here. This is simply a narrow space, enough for me to walk through or to access easily. See my tip, by the way, 17.5, managing a hedge. I keep this other area covered with mulch under my chop and drop system and also with wildflowers, in this case honesty or linearia. These suppress the weeds and assist wildlife. You can see that I leave the hedge trimmings as further mulch. If I find a particularly pernicious weed that has perennial stems creeping under the shrubs, or from my neighbours, as with these oxalis bulbs in this situation, these stems can't be removed easily, so I resort to chemical warfare. Wearing PVC gloves, I paint a little systemic herbicide onto the odd leaf. This travels through the plant, killing all parts. This isn't an option available if you're a dedicated organic grower. However, the amount of herbicide used is minute and is highly targeted. In this other area, I have a large rhododendron. I've trimmed up the lowest branches that I can access under the shrub and do a periodic sweep for weeds. If you inherit a particularly tricky weed refuge as the small gap between the wall of the house and the raised garden, be diligent about weed removal. Secondly, hedges and topiary. These permanent forms of shrubbery are a prime refuge for weeds, which can establish and creep from under the plants or scramble through them. This box or buxus hedge has been trimmed to ground level, allowing two types of creeping oxalis weeds to find a refuge. It can pay to keep the base clear for about, say, seven centimetres or three inches, as I'm showing here. This will allow you to reach underneath with a hoe or to hand weed. Note that in this situation I've allowed wildflowers, in this case Spur valerian, to establish under the base of the hedge and is attractive, non-invasive and a draw card for beneficial insects. Next, wild areas that you might have in your garden. Under fruit trees it may be hard to mow or to keep weeded. Here I spread organic debris as a mulch. In this case I'm trimming back the impatience and fuchsia plants, leaving the prunings on the ground under the sheet composting system, which suppresses weeds. See my tip 7.8 cheat composting for an explanation of the various benefits of this method. I also encourage wildflowers such as these nasturtiums and shiny angelica. These serve as companion plants for the benefit of the plum and apple tree growing here. I have very few weed problems here. However, I do carry out a periodic sweep checking for any nasties. Here I have found some Tradescantia, which is a very invasive pest in my region. I carefully follow every stem, removing all parts down to the roots. If I didn't, it would quickly proliferate and then spread to other areas. Next, we'll consider vegetable gardens. Here, if you follow my tips under section 11, I let annual weeds grow for a while, then I hoe them or dig them in. However, before I do the cultivation, I do a sweep for any problem weeds. In this case, bulbus oxalis, and carefully remove all the storage organs, in this case, the bulbs. I am particularly careful with potential refuges, such as under the lip of this wall. Next we'll talk about mulched areas. Although mulch is an excellent way to prevent annual weeds from germinating and emerging, over time weed seeds will settle in the mulch and weeds become established. 
The best way to prevent this from becoming a problem is to periodically top up the mulch with a fresh layer and the old layer will gradually decompose into the soil. This is particularly realistic if the mulch is an organic material such as bark, wood chips or straw. These materials gradually break down and contribute to soil fertility. Replenishing them will continually improve soil structure and health. If the plants in the garden are growing close together, you can usually throw the organic material loosely over the plants and then give the plants a shake to settle the material on the soil surface. Adding an extra layer is less practical with a stone mulch, as that won't break down obviously. Now I do realise that in some areas there are fire issues regarding organic mulches. This is not something that I'm familiar with, so I'm sorry you'd have to seek local expertise on this issue. Next, paving. If you laid your paving carefully, then you shouldn't really have much of a problem. In my courtyard, I ensured that my pavers are securely mortared. The annual water blasting that I do helps to remove any weeds that have established. However, where there are cracks, weed seeds will wash or blow into the cracks and become established. From here, they can spread into your gardens. They should be regularly controlled as many of these weeds will produce seeds extremely quickly. Weeding manually with a hoe or knife can be tedious. If you don't wish to use a herbicide, you can use organic solutions such as vinegar, salt, boiling water or a weed torch. I showed this garden where weeds have become a problem and the proprietor is intending to lift and relay the pavers. However, I'm showing here wildflowers that are migrating into the cracks along with the problem weeds. In this similar situation, Lois has encouraged wildflowers to self-seed into the gaps. The plants are snapdragons or antirhinum, lobelias, violas, aquilegias, hollyhocks and lychnus, which are gradually crowding out the weeds. Plus they give the paved area an attractive natural look. So that's it for this tip. Hopefully you've got some useful ideas to think about. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so and also like this tip so that you'll be sure to see other tips as they become available. I am uploading them at a rate of one a week. And thanks very much for watching this tip through to the end.